Now, Nicole, um, this new form of polling, which doesn't necessarily say how would you vote at the next election, instead it sort of tries to get inside the head of people about has your attitude changed on the government, is there a sense of buyer's remorse, where is it going? Um, it claims that about 27% of Labor voters would not, who voted for them at the last election wouldn't vote at the next. Now, that vote has been replaced by some others, so essentially the primary is just a little lower than where it was now. But that's a big churn in a first-term government. Uh, obviously, as a person who would like to see some of... Uh, that to be true, uh, for you to be returned to the parliament, but more importantly, a bad government to get uh, rolled over. Do you get any sense of that, not necessarily buyer's remorse, but they've had their chance and we don't care if it's uh, three years, uh, we're gonna, there's, there is a percentage of people that are willing to go back? Look, Paul, as we always say, the only poll that actually matters is the one on election day, whenever that may be, let's assume March 2025. But... What is not changing is that Labor's primary vote is disastrously bad. So I think the key message here, regardless of how the numbers might move around from poll to poll, uh, is that a vote for the Greens is a vote for Labor and, and really sort of vice versa. So I just I really encourage viewers, if they have any family members, because I know none of our viewers would ever, ever flirt with voting Labor, let alone the Greens, <laughs> Uh, but if they well, have family who members watch. who might be thinking about that... There's a few who hate that, watch. <laughs> it all counts in the ratings. I don't care. Uh, but... Sure, sure, sure. Okay. Well, I'm, yeah, but I'm sure that's probably a small number. They're just uh, <laughs> keeping an eye on what they think we're, we're up to. Um, a vote... What The critical thing when it comes to Labor's vote being so disastrously low and the fact that they keep falling over the line and forming government, and we just saw it here in South Australia with the Dunstan by-election is that a vote for the Greens is a vote for Labor. So yeah. people need to be very careful about where, where they're, not our wonderful viewers, but friends and family who might be flirting with doing that are putting their vote and please persuade them not to. Christy, do you get a sense that the people who have tuned out of the government are being replaced by people that are impressed by the government or they're people that are just moving into the great pile of undecided? Because if they're undecided, then they're up for grabs. Um, we've seen statistically how uh, One Nation has been improving on plenty of national polls, so it's not that it's all about teal voting here. No, it's not. There's it's certainly um, a drift uh, to minor parties and a huge load of minor parties as well. What's interesting here is that this is a huge sample. It's a poll of 2,000 people. Now, if we compare that to a news poll, news polls 1,500. So if the news poll's the gold standard, this is even bigger. 27% of people have decided to change their vote against the government. However... 8% of those are going coalition and 8% to the Greens. And herein lies the rub. The government is desperate to avoid minority government. Uh, now, with 8% of those voters going across to the Greens, we're about to see a fracturing of the Labor Greens' preferences, particularly here in Melbourne. Seats like McNamara are almost 29%. Green, 29% Labor, uh, and the Liberals poll 29% too. It's only Green's preferences uh, that helped Labor win that seat. And there's a couple of others, seats like Wills here in Melbourne as well, where the minor party vote polls about 7 8%. That's two socialist parties, United mm. Australia, Animal Justice, a whole range of them. So people moving away from the government isn't necessarily going to benefit the coalition uh, but it is going to see this fracturing of Labor and the Greens. Those Labor seats are up for grabs and the Greens have them in their sights. James, you've been around for a while. I say that as a compliment, um, which means you've seen middle of term before. You've seen people come and say, oh, mate, I'm all in on you guys. I'm ready to jump. I'm all in. And then it sort of returns to form. Are you seeing anything that feels different than the previous times that people have come up to you as an obvious part of One Nation in particular to say, mate, I'm all in on you. Do you, do you see something different? I think the biggest issue at the moment with a lot of voters out there is they don't see much faith in the two major parties. Uh, Nicole will probably disagree with me on this, but, and I'm happy for her to do it. But I, look, this is just feedback that I get from people who were previously coalition voters they don't know what the coalition honestly stands for. There's turmoil here in Queensland with them. 
Uh, they don't, you know, there's, there's left factions and right factions in every party, I get that, but to see where the coalition have moved away from their conservative roots in a lot of ways, like here in Queensland, for example, they voted for treaty. Now, that's not what the coalition have previously stood for, but they actively voted for it. And they actively voted just last month to lock in net zero uh, as a legislative measure here in Queensland. Again, not typically what the coalition will do. So there are a lot of conservative voters that are saying, guys, you're playing small target in this state. You're passing legislation with Labor that goes against the grain of what farmers want, uh, what the average person in regional Queensland wants. And we've had a gut full of you because you're deceitful to our face. You tell us one thing and when you get in, on the floor of parliament, you do the opposite. So that's why a lot of people are migrating across to minor parties like One Nation.